In mid-2009, Bankstown City Council embarked on an innovative project of community capacity building aimed at water management. It utilised a creative framework to improve community knowledge and understanding of Australia's water resources. The Cross Current Stories of Water project aimed to explore the significance of water in the contemporary lives of people living in the Bankstown region. Bankstown is a culturally diverse area with a large representation of Vietnamese and Arabic communities, not to mention a significant Aboriginal population. The project specifically targeted elders from the Arabic, Vietnamese and Aboriginal communities. These elders have lived experiences, traditional knowledge and culturally specific stories. The workshops aim to explore the stories, rituals, histories, myths, proverbs and cultural knowledge about water as they are experienced and interpreted by people living in Bankstown today. Each region of the world holds a different perspective on water, but each recognises its value and its central place in human lives. One of the things that a lot of people do not realise, Australia is one of the driest continents on this earth. The project utilised creative tools, including the sharing of personal stories and traditional cultural knowledge between participants. These stories and experiences were explored through painting, photographs, significant objects, weaving, video and interviews. Three arts-based workshops were run with each group with participation from 60 community members. Thiếu thốn lương thực nước nôi rất là nhiều. Thành ra những cái người nhật viên này người ta cảm thấy nước đó, nó quý hơn vàng. Vandana Ram is the Cultural Development Coordinator at Bangsound City Council and together with Peter Fox, the Environment Education Officer, developed and coordinated the Stories of Water project. I'm really interested in hearing from local people how we understand water and where we're coming from and where, you know, from our past and where we're going into the future. Almaya, a sakina, a zorka, a khalir, a samak, a halawa. It was important to use educators and artists with relevant language skills and cultural awareness. Joanne Saad, the Arabic artist, was particularly interested in working with people's photographs and objects significant to water. She encouraged the participants to bring these images and objects into the workshops as a way to explore memories and traditional practices. Miley T, the Vietnamese artist, brought her visual art skills of painting and traditional paper folding and taught the group to make a small lotus flower, a culturally significant symbol of water and purity. During the making of the flowers, many participants shared their stories of growing up near rivers, of the monsoon and of being refugees. The Aboriginal group visited the Georges River, where artists from Bulang Nangamai were engaged to use traditional weaving as a way to work with local community members on water-based issues. They brought samples of woven work, for example eel traps, fish traps, traditional water carriers, and encouraged storytelling to explore the relationship between water and people. Hours for it to sink right through it. These are 
Together, the group discussed how these tools and the technology of weaving sustained Aboriginal people. The day was based around weaving and water and the effects of salt water versus fresh water. The group also had a day of painting and storytelling, where a number of significant personal experiences were exchanged. The dam we used to swim in, that I painted last week, that used to come from the flood around the back of the creek that runs around the back of the mission, burnt bridge. We used to swim in it, and the colour I did that was similar to the colour we used to swim in that water, it was a, like the dam rose and the flood used to come. That's the only time we swam in it. People want to be heard, and this project empowered participants. It became a mechanism to build on their memories and experience as a way to increase their knowledge of water management. The two excursions to Warragamba Dam and the Georges River brought the three communities together for cultural exchange, which involved sharing stories of water. Cross-cultural interaction was made possible through the active engagement of interpreters and finding activities that encourage people to exchange ideas and information. All these processes were used to increase awareness, knowledge and understanding of issues of water supply and demand, as well as catchment and river health. The three communities were able to come together and bond with one another in a short period of time. They were able to learn from each other's beliefs and traditions. The Warragamba Dam excursion was the highlight in the project and helped the groups to understand where our water supply comes from, how to protect and maintain its quality, whilst considering future options for our water supply. The Cross Current Stories of Water project facilitated a deeper connection with place and the environment. We, from an Indigenous point of view, we have grown up with water and uh, water has meant so much of it because Australia has always been considered an arid, dry land and uh, certainly uh, where I come from, a remote area originally, water meant so much to me. This project demonstrated the importance of starting at a local level and finding the commonalities between people and landscape while building upon core values. <laughs>